All right, welcome to part four of the video walkthrough for Zenith Hunter. Um, as you'll remember in the last episode, we completed the normal ending and the alternate ending. Um, and then we also, as a result of that, unlocked a new game mode. Um, we got the silver medal and then the credits told us to continue from our previous save. Um, and that'll take us into the one hit kill mode. Uh, so basically, in this game mode, you don't want to get hit at all. Um, so it'll be much more difficult. Um, but it is definitely doable. Um, so for the rest of the walkthrough, I'll be running through that mode. And some parts are going to be relatively easy, especially near the beginning. Um, I'll stop and explain things for the more uh, difficult portions. But for the most part, um, I'll probably just be explaining some things about the game as I go along here. Um, so if we continue, you'll see that in the upper left-hand corner we've only got one heart. That will continue to be the case throughout the playthrough. And I will proceed to run. In general, the levels in this game, I set them up uh, so that if you're able to dodge things successfully, for the most part you can get through levels pretty quickly just by uh, running through. Of course, since I know I only have one hit, um, I'll probably end up hesitating in a few spots. And actually, I'm going to keep the hammer instead of using the dynamite because the rate of fire is better and it can go through walls like that. So that is pretty handy. And uh, all these hearts basically mean nothing now. Same with the uh, health power-ups. So, well, that's fine. I mean, so far so good. Um, and of course, this uh, walkthrough will also go over getting the gold pieces, the six gold pieces. Whoa. I almost ran right into that one. Um, just because that's needed in order to get the 100% ending. So I'm going to just go ahead and grab that. And I should note I'm doing pretty well right now, but uh, there will definitely be some sections later on where I'm going to be struggling. I think in the original playthrough that I did for this video walkthrough, I got around three deaths. That number was reset when I uh, beat the game, but uh, I guarantee I'm going to get many, many more deaths than, than three in this run through. Well, we'll see how things go. Like I said, so far things have been relatively smooth, but then again, it's the first level, and of all the levels I've played, this is definitely the one that I've played the most. And just jump over all that, and we're at the boss. And it's this guy again. So, like before, alright. <laughs> well, uh, I walked right into that one. I was just about to say he's pretty easy, but... Really, once you get onto this platform, he is. It's just a matter of not getting hit. There we are. And we've got the emerald. One gem down. Alright. Right. Um, so, like I said, these beginning levels are going to be relatively easy. Or, uh, quick at least. So, I think I'll just talk about Zenith Hunter in general just a bit. Um, I think I mentioned it in my 10th anniversary video, but I'd gotten into a couple other things separate from game design. 
and development. Um, so music and writing, mostly. And... So there was a period of time where I didn't actually do any game development from about 2015 till 2018. Um, so just before I started this project... Whoops. Okay, that part's a little tricky. Hold on, I'm gonna just, uh... Okay, I, I got a little too close to the ball then. Okay, there we are. So the last game that I had worked on previous to this was Terrier, and that was back in 2015. And, uh... So I realized there was quite a gap that was forming there. And so I decided to get into game development again. And I figured it'd be easy to do something that's just a straight platformer, since uh, the physics are pretty well defined already. And uh, in general, it's an easier form of game genre to work with. Get these frogs out of here. Ah, <clears throat> oh, sorry. So yeah, I was thinking of creating Zenith Hunter with the aim of uh, not it being like a quick hit necessarily, but a game where all the mechanics and the general ideas for it are all pretty well established from the get-go. And it's just a matter of basically coding things up and designing the levels. Um, and then polishing it to a larger extent than my previous games. I think the end result of that is relatively successful. Because um, things look pretty well. And there we go. Things are looking pretty good, and in general it's more polished than the other games I've done. Um, and in terms of the concept, the reason that I chose the one that I did was actually on account of... I don't know, I'm still gonna talk to this guy real quick. Again, that heart piece doesn't do anything. But we do need to talk to that guy so that we can unlock the gold that appears in the last level. So that is important. But yeah, the concept I had actually taken from getting over it with Bennett Foddy, which is a game I actually played for this channel previously. And the reason was because that game was actually, in my opinion, uh, I don't want to say disappointing necessarily, but it wasn't quite up to my expectation. And my major beef with it was the fact that at any point in time, you could make like one very minuscule mistake and it would end up taking you back to the beginning. Which I know is like the philosophical concept of the game, and that's fine. That's just how they decided to do it, but um, it didn't seem very accessible, which again I know was the aim, but um, it was one of those things where progress was essentially meaningless, because no matter how far you got, you could always just slide back. And in contrast to that... Oh, here, I'm gonna just beat this guy real quick. There we are. Whoops. Ah, I miscounted. I got distracted. Actually, if you're really good, you can manage to hit the spike twice in one attack cycle, which I failed to do. Maybe this time... Whoa. It. It's 
hard to do without getting a hit, which is the main thing. Nice. <coughs> okay, so I've got the sapphire now. Um, so in contrast to getting over it with Bennett Foddy, um, there was sort of the... Whoops. Sort of the spiritual prequel, which he mentions uh, during the course of that game, which is uh, Sexy Hiking. Which again is a video I had done for this channel previously. Um, but yeah, it was the same basic mechanics, but overall a much more enjoyable game. Just because uh, after every level, your progress was essentially preserved. I mean, there weren't really saves or anything like that, but um, the game was set up such that once you make progress, you can't slide back to the beginning, at least. So sort of as a response to that, I tried to make a game about climbing a mountain that was challenging but still had a decent progress system. Um, or at least it would if I wouldn't keep dying. So yeah, that's just the basic underpinning um, for the reason that I created this game in particular. Something that I knew I could do relatively simply and with a concept that I was interested in. That said, it still took like six months to complete this, because just in general, making sure things work correctly and the polish is there <clears throat> is all just part of the development cycle. Okay. Okay, that part I gotta I gotta slow it down. Take care of those guys. Okay. Take care of that. The torch isn't necessarily all that great of a weapon. I've had uh, a few of my friends comment on it that it's their least favorite, but I find it somewhat useful, at least in the context in which it appears. In general, I tried to make it so that the weapon balance was relatively good, especially in the later levels when yeah, there's a lot of frogs happening right here. Especially in the later levels when you run out of new weapons. Like, um, the first four levels, the first level introduces the hammer and the dynamite. And just in general, the game concepts that are going on. Um, shoot. And then after that... Level 2 is about the boomerang, level 3, this present one is mostly about the torch. Whoops. And then after that, it's just a matter of... ...selecting weapons to fit certain contexts. Um, but yeah, in general, in terms of the variety, I'm fairly satisfied with how it's turned out. Same principle with, uh, sort of the enemy selection. Got that guy. And the item selection. Whoops. Oh, no. <coughs> Gosh. Really don't actually have to kill those guys, I just... I just see them and get, get an idea, get some designs on them. There we go. And then we save this guy. And that's great. Okay. 
So yeah, um... Still sort of on the borderline in terms of difficulty. So I think I can still talk about a few things, but actually looking at the clock, uh, we're about halfway through the second level. Um, so I'm gonna stop it for now, and then we'll pick it up in the next video. So until then.